Hello everyone, I'm Ilish, I'm an architect and today we will talk about how you can do the renders within ArchLine XP. Uh, we have a built-in rendering engine and today we will talk about that, how to use that and what sort of key factors you need to consider looking at when you would like to balance between uh, efficiency and good quality renders. So we will go through all the settings and I will also show you uh, five key factors that are in very very important to be able to uh, understand what happens when you do the renders and why those things happen in a certain way as you experience them and today's project that you can see on screen uh, are um, those are those are the uh, models that we used previously with the with the lighting uh, it was a previous session uh, my colleague talked about the importance of lighting and what sort of uh, things you can do with the software. He uh, sh um, created lamps and he distributed all the light sources uh, along the ceiling and everywhere in this uh, in this building. Um, I'm having a, a certain version of that uh, project, so we will have a similar result. But today we will focus on not only on the lighting. We will talk about a little bit of that, but we will talk about other key factors uh, such as the materials, the settings and the complexity of the of the model itself so um, i mentioned that there are those key factors so let's see what are the key factors to, to to performance when you do the render so the first thing is obviously your computer your computer what you use uh, what sort of hardware hardware you have in your computer has a certain computing power it's it's the it's the raw hardware performance what we talk about and this time when we are talking about with uh, the built-in rendering engine that we ship with the software uh, that is the uh, cpu the 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 central unit uh, central processing unit of your computer and the uh, memory the ram uh, those are the two key uh, elements of rendering for rendering and everything uh, that is calculated with this renderer uh, are going through those two hardwares. You can imagine the, uh, the CPU as the neck of the bottle. Uh, so you have a larger neck, uh, a wider neck. You can pour uh, the water faster into that bottle. And you can imagine the, uh, the memory as the bottle itself. So should you have larger amount of memory, you can pour uh, more water into that you can you can render co more complex scenes to 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 talk about the the, the model itself so the hardware is important uh, currently uh, the GPU is doing nothing with the render so let's uh, make a clear of that that uh, GPU is for what you see now on screen which is a certain render but it is uh, it is a flat shading it is it is for modeling so your your GPU your video card your graphics card is working with the model when you are working with that and we, when you do the renders with the built-in render uh, you are using your CPU and your RAM okay so the, the following thing is the settings that we will cover all the settings uh, and you will understand what setting does what and how you can control what happens uh, and actually, uh, when we are talking about rendering, the currency that we use to pay for the performance uh, is, is, is time. So uh, I will show you, I will tell you what are key factors for balancing with the time. Usually uh, I can say that when you would like to uh, achieve a, a, a better quality, you will pay with time. Uh, so to be able to understand how that connects to the settings is essential, especially when you have a very short time to deliver your project. Um, the following thing uh, that I will also talk about today is the quality of materials. Now, talking about quality of materials in terms of reflectivity, reflections of the materials, everything that surrounds us, even this backdrop or even my uh, t-shirt is somehow reflective in reality. Now for rendering, we have materials that are kind of matte. We have materials that are much more reflective or something like that. I will show you how to apply those materials and how to tweak that, tweak those. Uh, basically, I can say that whenever you have the, the materials and you have uh, them reflected uh, the, the perfect way, uh, even mud like surfaces, uh, then you will have a very good result but uh, the situation is a little bit more complex than that you will need to focus on the on the most important materials first and then 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 talk about the rest so i will show you in practice how that works uh, and also just as we covered it uh, yesterday or the previous session 
uh, lights are key factors for rendering. Rendering is like virtually seeing a virtual uh, scene in front of you. Just in this case, when we talk about rendering, we are talking about ray traced rendering. That means we have a quite a lot of uh, bouncing lights and, uh, and um, all, all sorts of reflections all around us and also light sources. So the more light sources you have in your scene, uh, the slower the rendering uh, will be, even if you have a very powerful computer. And when we are talking about lights, uh, small uh, point-like lights are kind of cheap to render. Uh, these are, those, are, those are not too, um, not too uh, C CPU intensive. But when you use uh, sort of hidden lights or, or decorative lights, just as you could see on this photograph uh, in, the, in the background, uh, those are costly. So you should consider keeping them uh, just as much as you need to, to use them as it was, uh, sorry, as it was uh, covered in the previous session. So lights are key. We covered that. Uh, we had a whole session about that. I won't talk about too much of, about that situation. And finally, the fifth key factor is the model complexity. And the model complexity is measured in in a number of surfaces. When you download something from Google Warehouse, you have that count over there, uh, which tells you how many surfaces you have. And even the software, I mean, ArchLine itself will, will let you know when you download something and it is too complex. Sometimes you don't have a choice, but uh, many, of, many times you, you do have, and you need to take care of uh, the balance of your model. If you see that during work it is kind of cloggy and it's it's not working uh, smooth already, you uh, you 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 know that the render will be also slow. So you need to remove things that that you don't want to see. And I will show you a a, a good practice uh, for that how to how to do that. So these are the key factors, the five key factors: the hardware, the settings, the material, the lighting, and the model complexity. So let's see in practice how that works. So this is the model that that I've talked about and to be able to uh, do our first renders I will just go uh, and let's see what sort of views we have I think I will start with the with this one here inside and now what we see here is kind of the final version of this uh, model this is where we would like to get to but uh, as I mentioned you should be able to uh, to focus on what's important what's important what's the most important for for the current uh, 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 situation that you are uh, looking for and when you start rendering uh, the first thing that you need to uh, set up uh, properly besides the lighting is the, is the materials themselves so uh, to be able to do that you need to be able to uh, remove things that are not necessary now all the tiny details are not necessary we are looking for the large surfaces for the wall uh, the ceiling and the pocket uh, and this is what I only would like to see so for that, I will use the layer system of the software. So I will just go back and see what we have on the 2D. So the, the, the project itself is not too complex, but this, what I show you now, works for larger projects as well. Because when you have the 2D and you create your layers, I mean, the software automatically generates layers, but what you would like to uh, uh, optimize your workflow, you will create your own layers and you, would like, you will put uh, different versions of uh, the layouts and everything else into certain layers. And in case of rendering and in case of visual design, uh, you would like to be able to, to remove, uh, for example, the furnishing in one step, you would like to remove the decoration in one step and so on. So for that, I have an, an, um, an idea here. If you open uh, the layer properties manager, and you enable the use layers in this project, uh, as you can see, we have for this customer area, we have five different layers. Now, the recommendation that we used to say is that you should at least create three different layers for each every each and every room when you are optimizing for visuals. One is for the furnitures, and I mean those are the large parts, the the cabinets and the and the furnishing items themselves, like coach, sofa, and so on. Uh, and the other one, so that was the furniture. Uh, the other one are the decorative items, like the, those tiny things and even uh, some of the, these computers and keyboards, uh, mobile phones and everything else. Those are supporting actors of this model. Uh, we need them, but not at the first stage. 
Uh, and finally, one layer should be at least for the lighting. Now, in this case, the designer created three different layers because uh, he wanted to control them uh, separately. But if you have at least one layer by room for the lighting of that room, uh, then you are good to go already. And you can, of course, uh, make it even more details, just as you can see in this case. So three layers, furniture, decorative items and lighting. Now, if I would like to remove things then I don't want to see them, I can disable the visibility here, but I would like to show you an even faster way. I like that uh, the tool to use in this, uh, these situations, and that is the layer walk. If you click on the layer walk, you kind of literally walk between layers. You can just click, 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 quickly click on the layer and see what happens on that layer. You can filter to another layer, see what happens on that layer. And if you click on one layer and hold the control key on, the, on your keyboard and click on the second one, you can just enable the visibility of two layers or three layers or, or as many as you want. You can even actually click and drag if you would like to select multiple uh, things or you can just use the uh, selected first and shift select the last one. That is the same thing just as in case uh, uh, you are selecting files for example in Windows Explorer. So these are all Windows standards controls. So you just click here and uh, hold control, click on the slab and then uh, you have only the slabs, the ceilings are also covered here and the walls uh, themselves. So if you click OK, you can see that a narrowed down, filtered, uh, simpler version of your model. And if you would like to see that in the 3D uh, as well, not just on the 2D, you need to rebuild your 3D and that is with this little uh, 3D hammer, that's just as we call it, uh, to be able to, now we are able to focus on the wall surfaces, the ceiling surfaces, and the, uh, and the flooring itself, so nothing blocks our view. We have a clear visual of all of these surfaces, so we will see how those happen. But first, before I do that, uh, yesterday, or the previous session uh, about lighting, we talked about the artificial lighting. We have quite a few of those here, uh, but we did not uh, cover perhaps the, the sunlight, So uh, and that is also important when you do the rendering. So I am willing to talk about a little bit about that, how that works. Now, if you would like to set up the, the, the sunlight, the first thing is that if your model is georeferenced and, is, and, is, and it is well aligned to the north, uh, then you are good to go already. But you need to be able to determine uh, the, the, the calendar date and the time when you would like to see uh, the sunlight affecting your model. So uh, you need to go to view and you can select any of those options and now I'm focusing on the shadow simulation because that's one, that, that is one of the, the, the quickest and fastest ways to do that. So if you click OK, uh, then you can see this shadow simulation and in the background we can see uh, how the, uh, the sunlight affects the model. Now we are outside so we cannot see everything that is inside but at least where, where the door is open we can look into and see what happens. Now this is not a rendering, this is just a simple visual, but it, ha it, it already gives us a good uh, 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 visual on what will happen. So let's set up, for example, this is uh, on the northern part of the globe. So uh, when I set up a date around somewhere in, in winter, let's go October uh, 7th and set up a time, for example, during uh, somewhere in, in 1330. And let's just hit OK and I actually go inside because I also would like to show you what happens inside. Uh, so when I turn this on again, we can see that the sunlight is coming inside the model. And uh, well, this is something that you uh, would like to consider balancing with because uh, the sunlight is very, very powerful. Even if you have a lot of light sources all around you, uh, those are not having enough power to kind of suppress the light, so uh, the sunlight. And even if they do, the sun, as you will see, the sunlight uh, is having a very, very uh, important effect on your rendering. So you should consider whether you would like to let the sunlight in and bright up the areas, uh, sometimes risking burning out surfaces because it's too powerful, or you can just select another uh, date and time. And, and it's an important thing here. If you would like to create a night scenery, you need to move the sun below the, the horizon either either by using this or by using the, the time slider. So in that case you will have a night scene. So um, I think I will just set up a different time somewhere around summer. Uh, so uh, while we are on this uh, northern part of the globe uh, it means that we, we will have uh, 
a kind of high pitched uh, um, version of the high uh, the, 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 this the sun angle will be quite um, uh, high so I, I'm, I'm willing to, to use that because the sunlight itself is not coming into the model too much so let's say okay and then the, 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 sh the shading disappeared automatically but this doesn't mean that the sun is off it is just uh, a visual representation temporarily and when you disable this option it's not show but the render uh, already knows what to do with that Talking about the render, uh, the rendering settings are, are very, very important. Let me just, I'm sorry. Uh, let me just uh, uh, talk to you about that. And in the meantime, I'm looking for uh, whether everything is okay. I think everything is okay with this session today already. So um, so uh, let's go back, to, back here and see um, what happens with the rendering settings. What sort of rendering settings uh, are we uh, talking about? Rendering settings are here in the view and rendering and you have a few options for rendering and uh, also you can find that same um, golden globe here. If you click here, you have all the same options. Now, last time my colleague uh, used the integrated rendering uh, that is integrated in terms of how it behaves inside the software. It, 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 it acts and behaves as a drawing, so it will be in a, in a, in a window inside ArchLine. And today I'm using a standalone rendering. Uh, first, I will use the real time, so you will see what happens uh, directly. And then I will show you how to turn real time renderings into final uh, render. So uh, the first thing about the rendering is the resolution and, uh, and the render quality. Now, when we do the renders, resolution uh, is key. Um, for the speed of rendering, I talked. Uh, I, I I told you that I will talk about um, what sort of settings and how do they affect uh, rendering and resolution affects uh, rendering time a lot. So when you do the renders for yourself, not not for your client, you should not go with with uh, high resolutions. Now, for example, talking about the widescreen resolutions that you can select here, this is kind of a, a, a work, a study resolution. It's for yourself. When you do the rendering, you will see all the all the reflections, all the right lights, even on the small uh, version of the rendering, but it will, it will render way faster than you would render, for example, a widescreen uh, full HD or even talking about 4K that is even, even longer. So for yourself, you will always render uh, images in lower resolution to have a much faster render but for your clients you will go with either this or this some something larger because they will likely uh, see your images on not on, not only on their mobile phones but also on large screen tvs in their home so uh, to avoid having blurry not good quality uh, images in terms of resolution you should render larger resolutions for them and also you can set up a uh, user defined size in that case you can type any sort of uh, resolution and talking about about this uh, I wanted to show you something about how the ray tracing itself works because that is how um, it is connected with the settings that we are uh, using here so ray tracing how that how does that work ray tracing uh, is it, this is a very simple concept of ray tracing from the Wikipedia um, and it, it, it actually tells you how the rendering works now the image and the camera are the things that are we, uh, this, this represents what we see uh, the image has a certain resolution. Those are those little uh, squares, as you can see. So as you can see, the larger the resolution, the more squares you have, the more calculations the software has to do because the software actually calculates each and every pixels what the color of that pixel is. And uh, using this kind of filter that we have in front of us uh, in, a, in a certain resolution, we see the virtual world. And uh, if we actually while I'm talking about as a renderer, I'm, I'm, I'm imagining myself as I am the renderer. So I'm, I'm seeing the world through these tiny dots and I'm shooting rays to, to the world and see what it hits, uh, whether it hits a, a scene object, it hits the building itself, it hits my desk, uh, which I represented in my interior, or it hits us the sunlight itself. So this is how the renderer works. It shoots rays, millions of rays. So that's, that's why it uh, takes longer to calculate a version of a ray traced image than a, a, a line drawing, uh, which we had before. Uh, so it calculates all these uh, details 
for each and every pixel. So again, coming back to the resolution, this is why the resolution is important. So you should not have a large resolution when you work for yourself, but you, when you do the rendering, you need to uh, increase the res resolution and do uh, full HD or even larger uh, images for your clients. Okay, rendering quality. Now, real-time draft is selected and it is because I have selected that option when I started the command here. I will tell you what the difference are between exterior, interior and high detail and, and what um, use they do have. And now we can talk about the sunlight settings, the visualize the light sources, enable artificial lights and enable sunlight uh, options. Now, uh, visualizing the light sources, it is a kind of a heritage option from, from previous versions of, uh, of ArchLine um, from 2015 or even before. Uh, this actually generates uh, tiny kind of bulbs or, or so uh, to, the, to, the, to the sources of where you have your light, lights themselves in, inside the fixture itself. Uh, but uh, for the modern render that we have now in the software, it's not necessary. So basically, I recommend you to turn this off. But if you would like to test it, just go and, and do and you will see what, what, it, what it has, what it offers. But it is not necessary for a well done um, lamp already. So you don't need to turn it on, keep it off. Uh, enable artificial lights. Artificial lights are all the lamps. So obviously, if you would like to see them, you need to turn this option on. Uh, if you have all your light sources on and uh, turned on and you disable this option, it's like a, a, like a very uh, large switch for all your light sources in your uh, scene that you can use to turn off the artificial lights in one step. And this, the, the following thing is the sunlight. It is the same thing for the sunlight. Sunlight is a light source itself. Uh, you can disable the sunlight, but uh, keep in mind that if you disable the sunlight, it is not creating a night scene. I will show you that. It is simply disabling uh, the, the sunlight. Uh, bomb mapping, I will talk about that in a later session when we will see the materials because this is a, a material setting. You should turn this on because it will give you a very nice and detailed surface. And also the background. Backgrounds are important because you can either have a, a, um, a plain white background, which I have now in, uh, behind me, or you can actually uh, have a, a photograph or, or anything like that, or even you can uh, have a panorama. So if you go with a panoramic 360 background, you can select any of those backgrounds that we offer with the software, or, or should you have any sort of HDR, uh, background, uh, I mean the file format it is .hdr, uh, in that case you can select it here. Uh, I think I will just simply go with a an image and I will use this, uh, this uh, background image with the city sky cloudy and this is what I will use. Now in case of using background images uh, you should uh, keep in mind that uh, the resolution of those background images should be at least the same or larger than the scene that you are, uh, I mean, the final result uh, resolution of your render. Uh, if it's smaller, then the background will be blurry. So you should avoid that. And okay, so now I have an image. Uh, I can also specify my own uh, photograph, which I took on the side. Uh, if you do renders as I do now, which is kind of a, a, an easy to understand uh, render for the clients when your uh, eye level and the target level where you look at it's just the same level. So as you can see, the, all the verticals are nice verticals, not, not any sort of certain uh, slanted angle because of the distortion of the uh, perspective. And you should uh, apply similar backgrounds uh, um, where you can see the horizon is in the middle or around the middle of your uh, photograph. And of course, you can change the brightness of this uh, background. Should it be too bright or dark, you can change it. Well, in this specific case, looking from here to there, we won't see this background, but should we have a mirror surface here, we will just as well see it because it, we have a, a glass background behind us now, so it will be reflected here. Okay, so, and one another thing here is the rendering frame, which you can turn on and off here, or you can use this option here, the render frame on and off, and you will notice, you might notice something appearing here, and I, it, it seems that there is nothing uh, of a big change here, but it's simply because my screen, what I see in my workspace is too narrow for that wide angle. So I need to kind of hide this to be able to show you what happens. So this is the, the rendering frame. So now the software tells me that whenever I render my renders in this certain resolution or anything similar to this in, in ratio, this is exactly what I will see. Everything inside this area is what I will see. So this is a kind of good helper when you are looking for 
uh, a good good scene where you know, you can looking for the best shot when you would like to see a, a tiny bit of the uh, table here and and I don't know anything else in the in the, in the center. So this is what we have set up and now we will uh, start doing the rendering. So I will just use the same uh, standalone uh, real time draft. Just in this case, I started it from here, not not from here. The settings are the same and I will go. Yeah, well, I have not set up perhaps perhaps this image. Yeah, this should be. Uh, cloudy yeah and start rendering okay so the rendering now because I have selected a standalone rendering it starts as um, it's, it looks like a standalone application and it really behaves as as well uh, so in this case you can uh, I don't know put it to the other screen if you have multiple screens or something like that so it's some some in some sort of situations it's easy easier to handle and now um, this uh, this render was done in literally no seconds because it is a very small resolution and it is only a draft render. But we already see whether we have our light sources turned on or not because we cannot see those cones on the wall surfaces. We, we can uh, suspect that perhaps I have forgotten turning on this uh, light source uh, here which is the plain ceiling itself and I actually have an enable light source option here which is turned off so that's why I cannot see that so if I enable this option and I go back to the render which here which is here I can see that and as you can see the light balance has already changed a little bit because we have something in the in the render which most of the renders uh, actually do have it is called a tone mapper and you can imagine uh, a real world tone mapper if you think of your iris uh, that is a tone mapper if it it actually uh, reacts to the light conditions and it opens in darker areas and it closes uh, um, brighter areas so it controls uh, what sort of amount of light sources you will see so the, the image that you see around net will most of the time won't burn out so you will see the world around you so this is what happens in the render as well so uh, as you can see now we have all those nice light cones and I would like to show you one another thing when before I, I'm talking about these effects here and that is that now I have turned this on uh, I actually have sunlight outside uh, but uh, if I want, I can test whether this rendered image looks better with the uh, current sunlight settings or, or, or without those sunlight settings. So in that case, I can go to the details. And as you can see, these are all the same details. You can, even when you already have the render in front of you, you can change those settings. You can disable the sunlight and see what happens then. So it looks like it is nighttime now because the light conditions changed. It is not, it is like, like a very cloudy uh, day when the sunlight is, is above the, the cloud. So it has a very a soft uh, light and very dim light effect on the world. So this is what we have now. Uh, I could dial down the, the date and time to create a night scene, but uh, this is what I wanted to show you. So, so whether you do have night uh, or, de or uh, sunlight or not, it affects the, uh, the light conditions and it also affects the graininess of your image. This is also important. If you do not have light sunlight turned on, uh, most of the time if you will have uh, more grainy images on lower quality settings. I mean, I'm talking about these. I will, sh I will show you what those mean. Uh, so in that case, you can increase the uh, rendering settings, but I will cover that a little bit later. But now we are fine with that. We are, we are not looking for uh, clear images for uh, for draft renders. We are looking for reflections, lights, whether they are on, and surfaces themselves. So now, so now that I can see all the surfaces are around me, I can uh, well for, perhaps I can also I, oh, I can also close this uh, render and I can tell the software okay let's change these sh shadow uh, options and go with a different light setting. In that case, I can just close it and start it again. I I just wanted to double check whether I have July. Uh, the, the, the setting that I'm willing to work with and then I can just restart it again. The software remembers the settings, you can start rendering again and there you go, uh, you will have the, uh, the, the, this render very, very fast. Now, what I see here is, uh, is, a, is a kind of matte surface and it is because I did not talk about the uh, render styles yet and render styles are a key factor uh, in the software because those affect how your materials looks like look like uh, and those are actually here in the left hand side the design center and by the way sometimes if you accidentally close the design center or anything like that it is a common mistake for beginners and even for other ones when I, I sometimes I do that uh, by by accident you can just go and uh, enable uh, everything as it was before using the user interface 
reset interface to factory default and then you will have everything as it was before. So should you not find that what I'm looking for now, you just uh, use this option and you will see. And then now I'm using the catalog. Now in the catalogs, you have material catalogs, object catalogs, and you have actually render styles. Render styles are ceiling, chrome, curtain, wall, and everything like that. Those are kind of material presets. Uh, and let me show you what that makes. I mean, I have a ceiling here, and when I click and drag this option here, and I release, and I click on this surface, it actually did something, but I don't see the result here, because this is for the rendering. Uh, it changed how the ceiling uh, behaves. It changed how the, the ceiling looks like. Now, before I show you what the rendering result, result is, I will change the wall and I will change the pocket as well. So I, I'm looking for something that is called wall. Okay, so these are obviously wall surfaces. I need to use the wall um, option here. So I'm, and as you can see, it looks like this wall uh, is kind of a material because it has a brick texture, but it will not change how it looks like. So I just click uh, and drag and it won't change the texture. When I click here, it kind of changed the brightness of this, uh, this surface. And if I click here as well, you can see that something has changed, but not the texture. And it actually uh, changes the reflectivity and all sorts of other uh, real world uh, physical values of, the, of your model. So let's see what the result is after I use the pocket, because that will be the most visible uh, part of, the, of our model now. So I just click and drag and release and click here. And as you can see, it will be reflective. And let's see what that does with our uh, with our model. So now we can see that, well, I think I need to dial down the exposure. I will talk about the, uh, the effects, but I think the exposure is just too much now. Uh, so something like that. And as you can see, now the, the whole light scene is also changed because now how uh, when the when the light hits the surface it is more much more bright especially the ceiling the ceiling is that sort of ceiling uh, rendering style that i used is is tailored for that it is uh, making the ceiling brighter than normal uh, which is what your clients will like, expect uh, for the renders they don't want to see the 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 gray ceiling that it, it really is in, in in reality if you see it on, on a photograph they would like to see something brighter so you can just apply it and the same goes for the walls and when i when i apply the pocket setting uh to the pocket uh, texture or the, the pocket material whatever i had before uh it is kind of reflective we can we can barely see i actually you can handle this content as, as a drawing you can uh move it uh, holding down the um the, the scroll wheel and moving the mouse and you can zoom in and out so this is how you can handle it. and if i zoom in a little bit we can we can kind of barely see uh, a dim reflectivity of that material so as you can see pockets are set to be reflective a little bit uh, and this already gives us a lot of detail when you when we will have those furniture uh, sitting on this uh, ceiling those will have that that nice con contact uh, reflectivity and contact shadow which makes them uh, really being there uh, and if you would use uh, a mod surface which renders way faster uh, but it will be flat so i i would tell you that when you are focusing on the most important uh, materials, I mean the dominant materials of your model, those are usually the ceiling, uh, the wall surfaces and the flooring and obviously the glass surfaces of the, of the uh, openings uh, of your, of your uh, model. Uh, then you should uh, make them reflective. It will slow down the render, of course, uh, more than using a, a mod surface, but it will be much more realistic. Okay, so, so let's see how I can customize it. If I don't like how reflective it is, I would like to make it a little bit more high polished or change the settings, how can I do that? In case of uh, controlling the materials and uh, uh, customizing the material, what, which I already have in front of me, I can just right click on any of the surfaces and click on find material. Now the find material option finds the material, exposes its texture, its size, its, uh, its, its rendering style. I can, I can change the rendering style even from here. And I can just uh, scroll down and see its brightness, its reflectivity, its blurriness, and so on. So let's see what happens if I, uh, if, if I dial up the reflection to something high as, I don't know, for example, 70%. And let's just go back and check what happened. Now it's more reflective, but it has no clear reflection. And the 
and the clear reflection it is kind of uh, depending on the porosity of the of your material how grainy your material is if it's high polished it has less blurriness for the reflection so if I would like to create a high polished version of this uh, floor I just dial down this blur blurriness to zero and then I go back here and now it's much more reflective. It's, it, this is even not still a perfect mirror because I actually have a bomb mapping uh, applied here as you can see it on the left hand side. Bomb mapping is making those kind of tiny you know bumps uh, of, of the surface that comes from the texture in this case. The software is able to uh, calculate the bumpiness of your uh, surface based on the texture. It looks at the bright and dark pixels and it and it handles them as higher and, and lower areas. This is an automatic system which is very very convenient but if you don't want to use the, the automatic uh, surface uh, definition you can just go here and select any sort of other material type even you can browse for, for your own normal map which someone else designed for you or you can you can do that then you can just uh, apply that. I won't go this deep now because this is a a starter session for the rendering but you can even control that. Now I changed the reflectivity uh, of the surface and I changed the blurriness but if I would like to have a much more realistic pocket not very high polished version uh, in that case I just dial this up somewhere around perhaps 20 and I will test the render and I, and I see the result is okay I think this is much better it has its own glossiness a uh, kind of uh, blurred glossiness but I like that I will keep this and later I can still tweak it but the most important thing is that you should tweak those ma these materials without the uh, other things occluding uh, your view you should clear the view just as I did before removing unnecessary parts setting up the ceiling setting up the uh, wall surfaces and the pocket and then put the other things inside so this is what I will do now I think now I'm done with this I could uh, further tweak all the rest of the materials but this is this is the same step that I would do for each and every so I won't repeat myself uh, one thing I would like to show you because now what I did I did not change the material I simply uh, I mean I did not switch materials I changed the material which I already had on the surface but what if I would like to switch this material to another one for example this I would like to test whether it looks like looks much better with a with a I don't know um, a glass surface or, or a mirror that I already have in my libraries so in that case what I would I will do I just go to the home screen and I go to the materials library and I go and find something uh, perhaps in the glass and mirror and I just look for uh, any sort of mirrors here. Like, let's see this. I would like to use this this turquoise mirror, and I just uh, apply it on the surface. And this is also a click and drag um, uh, command, but it is a little bit different than the render styles because then you have a few options what you would like to do with this material. And now I would like to change it on this uh, on this surface only. So I select this last option. I click here, and then now this is reflective also. So what I see here. I can see the background as I uh, mentioned before because we have a clear uh, glass surface behind us so we can see through that and so in that case even though you don't see directly the uh, the background it could be important uh, for as a supporting actor for your for your model uh, because it gives uh, a lot of detail into the model so I well I actually don't want to make this as a reflective surface so I just uh, uh, remove this uh, this setting I just uh, disable this and and go back uh, to the previous uh, setting and then I would like to bring in more and more details so how to do that you need to go back to the um, to the 2d and uh, you don't even have to switch drawings it's just uh, important to make it active and then you can go into the uh, layer settings and why it's important to switch back to 2d because uh, if you are still in the 3d if you click here you will see only three layers because you actually now in the model you only have three layers uh, because you didn't build the content of the rest of the layers so if you go back to the 2d you will always see all your layers and based on those layers you can build what you would like to see in the 3d and only those layers will be available in the 3 so that's important so now I'm, I'm I'm going back to the 2d and I'm enabling the furniture for example I this is what I do I just hit control I'm, I'm holding control and I click in he, uh, here and say okay and uh, just rebuild the 3d so this is what we have here okay so now let's see what the content is now here uh, now as you can see then this render what I'm using this is real-time draft this is continuously trying to keep track of what I 
change uh, during uh, even rebuilding the model, moving things around, changing their materials. Uh, should it not happen uh, anymore? Because sometimes this uh, render just simply loses connection with the uh, with with the software because it is a very very CPU intensive process, and if you if your computer is not powerful enough, it will just say, okay, I'm terminating this because I don't want to kill the computer. So uh, if that happens, no worries. You only need to close this, say yes, okay, and then restart it again and say, okay, stand on rendering again and start again. You will go back where you where you left off. So uh, now I'm having this view and yeah, I need to dial this down, but I did that before already. So I, I will I will talk about this, this uh, a little bit later. So now I would like when I would like to change the uh, the materials, for example, the the secondary dominant surfaces now for me are the are these surfaces here. Well, those look uh, those are looking cool, so I, I won't change the paintings. But I would like to change the uh, these white furniture surfaces, and I would like to test how they look like. And so I go back to the home screen and I say, okay, render styles, and let's go with the metal first. So I think a metal will look like uh, look cool with this. Uh, so this is a metal surface. Apply it here. And I, I applied it on the material, not on a surface. So whatever else I use that material, it all it is automatically uh, visualized. So I'm coming back here. Uh, well, maybe it's a bit too too much. Or I can tweak it, or I can just go with, for example, a marble or anything else, and let's see how that looks like. And if I like this much better, well, I think it's 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 a it it has a nice glossy surface, especially when I dial this down, and we can see that how it looks like. So I will go with this one. So this is what you will uh, end up with, uh, changing the materials, and still you have the option to fine tune whatever else you would like to fine tune with that material. Okay, so let's bring in a little bit more details. So the second step is bringing uh, bringing in details, test them, whether they look like uh, you wanted, and then when they are, then just bring in more details, more details, more details. You will see that rendering will gradually slowing down because you will have more surfaces, and this is where the fifth key point, the fifth key, key factor, the complexity of the model comes in. Whenever you turn in more and more details into the model, it will slow down the rendering process because the, 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 the this version virtual eye, the camera, the render itself, we'll see more surfaces. So um, so when I, I'm bringing in more details, it happens the same way. I'm going back to the 2D and I'm again using the uh, layer walk. I like to use this, so I ju I'm just turning on the decorative items. And uh, yeah, I think, I think this is enough for now. I'm saying OK, and let's just rebuild the 3D and see what happens then. I will see all those computers, keyboards, and everything else in this showroom uh, already appearing. And finally, at the end, I will turn on the uh, lights as well. But this is actually what I will uh, end up with. And uh, what I would like to do is that, uh, yeah, well, this is what I mentioned that now, unfortunately, the renderer lost the connection. No worries. You can either, actually, you can try re-render it. Sometimes this, this helps, but if it's not making the thing that you want to, then you just close it and go back to the 3D and just uh, do this uh, standalone rendering now real time and we will talk about the rest later. So I just started again and you will see uh, this is kind of a work render so it's a not, not a large resolution it's only uh, 800 by some uh, and uh, so it takes uh, not too long to render but it takes a little longer now because I have a little bit more details in the render. So now I think now it's uh, good to talk about the effects that you can set up even during rendering. So if your rendering takes longer and, and large renders will take much longer than this one, uh, then uh, you will you still have time to set up the brightness, the contrast, the saturation and everything else for your light render. Now, I recommend you to always start with the exposure. If your exposure is not correct, you won't do anything uh, nice with the brightness contrast and everything else. If it's not correct, just as in case of photograph, if you have an overexposed photo, it is really difficult to create an, uh, a cool, nice image uh, out of that. So first set up the exposure. In case of uh, interior scenes, uh, most of the time you need to increase uh, the exposure, but sometimes when, you, when your uh, scene has enough light sources already and it is very, very bright, perhaps you need to uh, dial it down. I, I'm highlighting this because now we are rendering interiors and when we talk about exteriors, that's another topic, I will talk about this at the end, uh, you will need to handle this a little bit uh, different. So exposure is correct. Now, uh, setting up the exposure is uh, finding white. If you feel whites are correct, then exposure is okay. You should try to avoid 
burnout surfaces as much as possible. Uh, if uh, you still do have too much, perhaps you should consider changing the light scene. Uh, perhaps some of your lights are too, too uh, bright. Uh, but something uh, like this is, I think, correct. We did not lose uh, the details still. Uh, uh, of this uh, detail, but we only have a very, very few parts burn out. And actually I need those uh, here because this represents how uh, bright those areas are. So I'm, I'm, I'm fine with this. Uh, then I can focus on brightness, contrast and the rest. Uh, brightness is, is something that uh, the difference between brightness and, and exposure, uh, the, we can consider that exposure is like, uh, like, like opening the iris, opening the, 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 the Apache of your, uh, of your uh, photo machine. And it, it controls how much light you, your eye and your, in this case, the renderer gets. Uh, so it sets up the overall uh, light amount. Now brightness, on the other hand, it is doing something which you could do in, for example, Photoshop or something else, just it's, it's integrated here. It is actually making all the pixels brighter or all the pixels darker. Now, the reason why you should not use it too much, because as you can see, it has a negative effect. When you use it uh, with a too high value, it is actually washing out the colors and you don't want that. So uh, you should use always, you should always perhaps fine tune uh, brightness and contrast and the rest of us, rest of these, but not too much. So you just handle it the way you want. And as you see that, well, now this is a little bit better then you should also control the, the contrast because once you change the brightness, you should kind of compensate this negative effect with the contrast as well to make the this kind of washed out flat uh, effect of brightness with the contrast a little bit. It's again, if you use too much of that, you won't end up anything with anything good. Now, the reason why you still do still can uh, control it in, in in much higher areas because this is one sort of light light uh, sort of light light condition and you can do many different type of renders night scenes and uh, as well so in that case the contrast and the brightness is something uh, that you will change a little bit more uh, different saturation saturation changes how saturated your image is and if you use brightness if you change brightness uh, you can kind of compensate that uh, color color washing uh, by adding a little bit more saturation and actually uh, your clients will expect more vividity uh, in, in your renders as well. So you need to uh, add a little bit more uh, of the saturation usually than uh, what is kind of uh, ex expected normal. Uh, but again, if you just dial this up, it, it will be kind of more cartoon like if you would like to go with go for that effect, you can of course do that. But again, I think the golden rule here is to do it, but not too much don't overdo it. And shadows, midtones, and highlights, those are actually, well, shadows are dark tones more like, uh, because if I dial this up, as you can see, all dark areas are, make, uh, are, are even darker. So it's not necessarily only the shadows, it is for the dark areas. So you can, you can actually make dark areas more uh, strong, more, more um, effective on the, on the render. It's kind of a selective uh, contrast. You can also do this, something similar with the midtones and something with the highlights. Now highlights are these areas that we already have experienced as very, very bright areas. So in this case, perhaps I don't need to change that, but again, you can, you can change that. The, the white balance is uh, for kind of a mood effect as well, because if you use uh, a white balance, which is kind of uh, cool white balance, uh, cold colors, then you can uh, set up uh, um, a, a feeling for your the same render. I didn't change the sunlight outside, but I can set up a, um, um, a scene looking like it is, for example, somewhere in Sweden uh, in winter time. Or I can just uh, dial this up and bring in more orange, and in that case, it looks like somewhere in the Bahamas or somewhere else. So you can just change the mood of the of the image. If you don't like the result and you would like to go back to the default uh, pro tip, you just click here and the software resets this value and any of those works the same. So if you would like to reset brightness, you just click here. Now, if you would like to reset everything, you click here, the reset all uh, option. But if you would like to only reset any of those options, you just click on the icon. Okay, and so I already covered exposure. So this is how it works uh, in practice. So resetting all back to default, changing the uh, brightness, this is how it works. Uh, well, I forgot to show you one um, render style which I wanted and that is the uh, surfaces of these uh, screens. Now, those are special materials. 
uh, not because of their uh, texture but because how they behave and you will find a material called real emissive now we have a false emissive that's for uh, for similar result but for uh, for uh, less powerful computers uh, real emissive will actually uh, behave as a light source so if you just click and drag it over this screen this screen uh, perhaps this other one you will see a different result where you could tell that yeah yeah those are monitors those are having a night nice bright uh, effect and d5 would turn off all the light sources those will really uh, um, light up the scene because those are actually now special light sources those are not not created as light sources those are created as materials but those materials behave as light sources so those are the real emissive materials for screens uh, um, advert uh, surfaces and so on okay so I think I have covered uh, pretty much everything that I wanted to talk about this uh, time and I wanted to show you how to switch to a final render how to create uh, now we are working with uh, low resolution renders and uh, and uh, we are to talking about real-time uh, rendering but if I would like to change this I can just uh, you know select a, a different resolution uh, for the sake of speed I won't do that now but this is where you change it to the final version and then you can also say that okay let's just go with an interior quick render how that how does that look like and in that case the software will actually do a little bit more analysis as you can see you won't see the image right away uh, it takes a little longer but all those grainy surfaces we had before all those blotches that we have those uh, those dark patches on the surfaces those, they do disappear because now the software uh, considers uh, more details it, it is uh, making a more precise calculation to to say uh, the least and as you can see it takes even longer even though we are only using a very small resolution for work uh, resolution and still if I'm not satisfied with the brightness and the contrast and everything else I can even during render I can change those I can change the brightness I think I will make it a little bit brighter with the exposure and then I can change the brightness contrast and everything else and when the result is done I can just click on save and I can save it in a PNG JPEG or anything else the software offers PNG by default because it has a very good quality by default and it's uh, having a re re uh, relatively good size but if you would like to go with a JPEG you can just save it as a JPEG if you would like to go with a kind of a good to good to go option go to option uh, I would recommend you to save in PNG and later with any sort of even with paint you can save a JPEG if you have forgotten but if you would like to uh, save the best quality which is identical to what you saw on screen without any sort of JPEG loss you should save the, uh, the PNG and then later you can decide what else you would like to do with that okay so this is how it looks like now it will perhaps take like two minutes or so uh, and the work renders the the real-time drafts uh, only took uh, perhaps 10 or, or, or 15 uh, seconds so this is how uh, large of a difference you will have you will experience between rendering times when you simply increase uh, the rendering quality from uh, the lowest uh, from real-time rendering to the middle which is interior so let's see now we have this result let's just keep that in mind that it was clear and it was nice and we have all the details what we wanted to see and let's check what would we achieve with an exterior quick render will, will it work for an interior and let's just start it again now the software did not restart it again and in this case it is uh, kind of logical because just imagine that you render for I don't know 10 minutes a half an hour or an hour and simply by changing something it restarts render and you lose something because you have simply forgotten saving it no worries it won't restart it uh, itself automatically if you change between the final renders uh, you need to uh, restart it manually so now I will render this uh, visual using an exterior uh, rendering uh, setting and let's say uh, let's see what the result will be and actually and this is what I wanted to highlight exterior render even though the name implies that it is for exteriors and it, it is really tailored uh, for exterior renders it is actually uh, more accurate if we say it is tailored for well lit uh, scenes and now our scene is very well lit we have uh, quite a lot of surfaces uh, light sources uh, around us so it will give you the same nearly identical same clear image just as the interior render uh, would have uh, created for you but it will be faster so 
it is a uh, it would be a bad habit to tell you that you should always go with the highest render setting and you will get the best result because many cases when your scene is very well lit you will have the same result or very very identical um, just with the lowest uh, the lowest uh, production setting which is the uh, exterior qu uh, quick render and you will th this will be perfect just as well uh, so you won't have to wait uh, as long as i have uh, waited before it was uh, nearly uh, one minute and before it was around two minutes so it's kind of half the time okay uh, one other thing that I wanted to show you, and this is also a difference between the integrated render, I mean, when it behaves as a window inside your uh, your project and when it is kind of a standalone version of it, uh, because when it's a standalone version, you can actually close ArchLine in the background. So you can uh, save computing power by not using ArchLine. You, when you have a complex scene, ArchLine itself is also using uh, CPU and RAM, so you can close it because now you have a separate rendering window and whatever you already passed here it will stay here so you can just do the final renders uh, and another thing that you can do because you are using uh, this standalone render is that the standalone version supports uh, a so-called render list imagine that you would like to deliver all these renders that you have previously selected uh, set up how it looks like uh, I don't know change the brightness and everything for that for for example for this view now what I'm rendering now I have changed the brightness the the, the contrast the exposure I have fine-tuned it I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that and then I would like to terminate it going back to this one uh, setting up the settings I, I'm, I'm not willing to wait for the final results I'm just willing to quickly set up the settings for all of these uh, all, all of these renders and then let the computer do each and every renders step by step so i don't have to stay there waiting for the render to be finished and then switch to another one and render so what i do i just switch a view set up the settings terminate rendering switch to another view set up the rendering settings terminate and then come back to the list and enable that okay let's just do this and this and this and start rendering instead of this one you should initiate the render list with this button so this will actually go and save and and i mean render and save and render and save and render and save all the images if you'd like to change where those images are saved you can change it here by default they will be uh in the uh, default arsenal xp draw 2020 render folder with the project name so it's easy to find but if you would like to change it you can change it here either or you can go to the rendering settings here uh, which uh, whichever you choose you will see the same rendering settings and actually this is the the, the only thing that i did not mention what this does and uh, this is the you can you can specify the folder where you would like to save your renders in one go so you don't then you don't have to uh, change them uh, one by one okay so i think um, yeah and finally one more uh, thing that i mentioned and those are the exterior renders now uh, i don't need to switch to uh to another project to be able to determine uh how that looks like and show you how that looks like i can actually show you something interesting that you would consider doing for your projects and those those are the uh, uh intersection renders uh i mean now that i have this model here this is the full model. I mean, everything else is generated. Whatever I, I see in the model, it is all surrounding me. But if I would like to create a 3D section for rendering, I can actually cut this model half by using this specific option. I clicked on this little uh, arrow here and I can use this create cutaway 3D view. How does that work? It works in a very, sim very uh, simple fashion. You just click on one corner point and another one and see now this is the thing that I'm willing to keep. Everything inside this uh, rectangle uh, will be kept and everything else will be cut out. So now what I will see is a half cut model. It's like a doll view or something like that, a doll house view. And I like this uh, and I would like to even see that in render. But now because I have switched to uh, the final render, it is not responding whatever I did. So uh, now what I would like to do, I just would like to go back to the details and start real-time render either or i can just simply st start a new one uh, and now it still uh, did not reflect the changes so i need to either rebuild the 3d or just i don't know let's just move this a little bit so uh, i can invoke uh, a refresh to the render so now i will see this uh, half cut or perhaps i have lost the connection sorry for that i will just close this and initiate another one so let's just go back and 
start rendering real-time draft yeah everything is the same as before and let's see how it looks like now in case of exterior renderings uh, one key thing that you need to uh, always check is well for first thing is the background because now it looks a little bit strange perhaps a, a regular color like a uh, let's just go with a single color and uh, like something like this this is much better for this uh, so the background is important obviously and the um, the the exposure now here if I'm looking from this angle it is kind of okay but if I turn the camera around and imagine that this is a building which I'm willing to render from outside uh, then uh, everything is is kind of white burnt because uh, now we have a lot of light source a lot of um, sunlight uh, hitting the surfaces of the of the sunshine so uh, the, the the basic rule here is that when you do regular uh, external renders you need to usually dial down the exposure and then set up the rest now because I'm willing to use this for a special uh, version a special render like a side view or something like that a perspective side view it's just enlarge it like something like this and I can even save this view then uh, this is what I will end up with and also one more thing that I wanted to show you, you can actually create kind of rendered uh, elevations rendered wall views by simply using this option here uh, on this little navigation uh, bar if you click on this option you can select uh, you can select a right hand side view and the reason I'm doing that because uh, now I'm seeing this model and when the when you see the, uh, the drawing in front of you you should imagine yourself always standing here at the bottom of the screen so in that case this is the right hand side which uh, I'm willing to set up here so I'm going back here and saying okay this is a right view okay and then now let's see what happens here so this is what I end up with you can change the control you can change the brightness you can change the exposure you can control what you see here on screen you can save this and you can also bring it into your uh, plot layout as a rendered version of the of the other uh, wall elevation views that we, we perhaps uh, created or the elevation views of your uh, complex building so this is basically what I wanted to talk about we covered uh, all of the settings uh, for the rendering we talked about uh, how to change the render uh, scene uh, whenever I would like to go back the, to the full model I just use the quick 3d model to rebuild it again and I just go back to the uh, one of the, one of my previous uh, 3d perspective views perhaps the one that we started with and I think it was this one and I can change uh, the materials so the key factors here is focus on the most important materials uh, enable content only that are necessary and if you have a larger building you, and you have all these layers room by room you can say that for example there is this office here and uh, I'm willing to render only this office but not the rest of the building everything else that are in other rooms I can disable I can just simply not give to the render render so I can tell the software that I know that those won't be visible don't even calculate them so you won't lose time so using the layer system you can have very efficient renders and just as I mentioned with the rest of the settings you can achieve certain type of uh, goals that you would like to uh, achieve and you will end up rendered results with all the light sources all the details and all the fine uh, shading that you wanted to uh, create for your model uh, let's see what sort of questions we do have I think we have quite a quite a few arrived and uh, okay uh, so uh, if uh, there, there was a question, let me see uh, what was the first one. Okay, uh, there was a, there was one question. Update all instances. Yeah, well, I actually uh, covered that. Uh, it was already covered in the, in the in the session. Yeah, when you change a material, you change the material. You don't change the surface. You change the material, and if the material was applied anywhere else. Uh, it will be changed everywhere uh, in your model which is very convenient you don't need to think okay did I forget anything you just apply the surface uh, material everywhere we would like to see and you control the material and you will control your whole uh, visual there was another question uh, I am trying a full HD render in the render window the size is showing as uh, uh, a smaller resolution why is that well I can only imagine that perhaps uh, uh, this happens because uh, you, so the thing that you need to check uh, is that when you do the render uh, 
uh, you should check what sort of resolution you see here. So when I'm closing this and I'm changing the resolution to anything else, initially when I start rendering, uh, the render will start, start with this resolution. So it's not the screen that you are working with, it's the setting that you are uh, setting up here. So if you just go and start rendering with this one, the initial render size will be this render size, but later, just as I mentioned, you can change it to any anything else. Uh, there was another, another question about uh, to do white render uh, set to matte white, so we could only render shadows distribution. Well, for that sort of thing, I used to use the, the grayscale uh, render when I actually don't change anything uh, of my materials. I simply use uh, the, um, the 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 saturation. I just decrease the satur uh, saturation to zero, so the colors they're they're uh, kind of. Um, psychological effect, whether I, I consider uh, a, a yellow brighter than a red, uh, won't change how I uh, uh, how I see the content in front of me. Uh, but uh, you can also change the materials to 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 something uh, bright white. Uh, perhaps for that, uh, you can also use the color cards. So you can set up color cards, and one version of the color card for each uh, of your materials that you use could be the bright white material that you would like to use uh, everywhere. And if with this one, you can even kind of highlight things that you would like to. So you can say you can create a render uh, with all white surfaces everywhere, but the things that you would like to focus onto, those are not uh, white, but those are keeping their original uh, material. And using the, the, the color uh, cards, it is just one single switch uh, for each of the materials. So it's very, very fast. Okay, if you want to create all white renders, yeah, that was the same question. And uh, thank you for my colleague uh, answering those questions also. And yeah, it will be white, you can still differentiate. Yeah, that is, uh, that is also a cool and good uh, answer. Can we change somehow materials in the scene to a particular one in one click? Uh, well, all the materials you cannot do in one click because that's the most, that's the main mechanism that works in the software that you can change one, materi one material to another one. But I can show you one thing that is perhaps faster that, than what I show you because now what, I've, what I did here uh, is based on what I can actually see on screen. If I cannot see something on screen, uh, then how can I change its uh, material? Now you don't even have to see the material in front of you because we have uh, an option for that. And it is, let me think where this option is uh, placed to. Yeah, it's this here. The modify uh, sub substitute material. If you click on that, the software will ask you to select the material that you would like to change. And then when you hit OK, you will see this dialog coming up again and the software will ask, what is the material that you would like to change it to? So if you know that your model contains one, two, three, four, five, six materials, you can just go through, it's like a list that you can go through and you can just use the substitute material and, and uh, change, switch materials from one material to, to another one. Okay, uh, so that is how it goes. And uh, there's another question. When using Groommaker after setup elements are shown in wireframe, well, uh, I did not use the room maker here, but room maker is actually based on the room maker setting. So it can be a different setting than what I'm, what I used here. But whenever you would like to control what you see in front of you in a certain uh, way, you can always control it here. So should it appear in hidden line removal? Should it uh, appear in grayscale or x-ray or whatever? You can just click here and say you would like to see. What I'm used to use is not the realistic, uh, because in case of the realistic, uh, I have some, to some tone shading. Most of the time I actually use consistent color. So I won't see reflections, I won't see uh, tone tonal changes. And this I usually use uh, for my clients when I talk about the colors because many of the client of your clients perhaps they won't understand uh, how the software represents surfaces and they will just say okay we didn't talk about this color right this is what we we, we talked about and I can see a different color so you can tell okay when you do the renders those are affected by the light sources but these are actually the same color so this is this is what I use when I communicate uh, color design okay um, yeah, I think now I have covered all the questions. Uh, 
I think, yeah. If I uh, forgot to answer uh, anyone, I hope not. But if uh, I forgot to answer anyone, or you should, should you have any other questions uh, watching this show later when it's not live, just comment below uh, or send us an email to uh, info at archlinexp.com and we will uh, forward it to the person responsive to your question and you will get an answer. And uh, also, I'm uh, happy that uh, you will all hear and uh, you were so active and having all those questions. This is the last session uh, for this uh, uh, starter uh, workshop series of uh, seven or eight episodes uh, from the start uh, to the end for interior design, interior design course. Uh, so this is the seventh and last part. Uh, we will start an intermediate course uh, one week later, so not the next week, but the, the week after. Uh, you will get an information about that and I hope you will be able to attend that and you will have a lot of questions and you will be active as you were active today. Uh, so thank you again. Uh, this was the uh, seventh part of this show, the rendering. We will come back with the intermediate course and uh, until that, have a nice day. And if you would like to, you can download the trial version of the software and you can uh, also test it for yourself. And yes, one another thing, talking about the, um, the sessions that I was uh, about to uh, tell you, you need to go to www.archlinexp.com. You need to come to webinars to be able to see the, the upcoming events. And the first one will be uh, the 4th of May, 11 a.m. just as today and it will be about the materials so we will talk about uh, way more about materials and how to fine-tune them and you will uh, learn uh, kind of best practices that you can uh, apply for certain type of materials especially those shade uh, shaded materials for curtains uh, uh, light sources uh, around the light sources and even uh, certain type of textiles and mirrors. So uh, we are uh, there for you in the next uh, series uh, uh, of eight uh, different um, intermediate course uh, sessions. Uh, see you there. And if you like this video, uh, just uh, give us a thumbs up and we will see you next time. Thank you very much.